This is an example problem about accounting for debt and equity securities. The problem states, during 2011, Crab Company purchased 5,000 shares of Snail Company common stock for $18 per share and 3,200 shares of Lobster Company common stock for $21 per share. These investments are intended to be held as ready sources of cash and are classified as trading securities. Also in 2011, Crab purchased 6,400 shares of Shark Company common stock for $27 per share and $80,000 of treasury notes at 103. These securities are classified as available for sale. During 2011, Crab received the following interest and dividend payments on its investments. And we'll come back to these in a second. The fair values of the securities that at December 31, 2011 were as follows. And we'll come back to these in a second. And these are some other transactions that happened. On March 23, 2012, 3,200 shares of Lobster Company were sold for $16 per share. On June 30, 2012, the Treasury notes were sold at 102 plus accrued interest. And then these are the fair values of the remaining securities at December 31, 2012. So what we're going to do is prepare all the journal entries for 2011 and 2012. So the first thing that happened is these purchases right here. So that's the first thing we're going to go to. In 2011, for trading securities, we have these this entry right here investment and trading securities 157200 this is to record the purchase of snail company stock at of 90,000 and lobster company stock of 67200 and that's just the share price multiplied by the number of shares that we purchased for AFS or available for sale securities we have this entry the investment and available for sale securities is the same thing we record the purchase of the crab stock at 172800 and the treasury notes of 82400. The treasury note was 80,000 purchased at 103. That just means 80,000 times 1.03. That's 82400. Now this is reflecting our uh, dividend and interest payments. Sorry, that are right here. These interest and dividend payments interest and dividend payments we received in 2011 and that's what this entry is explaining right here so first we have cash for 26,100 we have dividend revenue for 22,900 and interest revenue for 3,200 the dividend revenue breakdown looks like this so snail company you have 5,000 shares times 250 per share Lobster Company is 3,200 shares times $1.25 per share. Shark Company is 6,400 shares times $1 per share. Gives you a total of 22,900. That's this entry right here. Interest revenue. The interest revenue from the Treasury notes for six months is 3,200. It's just 80,000 times 0 0.04, 4 percent. That equals 3,200. Now at the end of 2011, we need to make these entries for the fair values of these securities and that's what these are right here these four are these two entries now first for trading securities we have an unrealized loss of a thousand the way that uh, the way that looks is this this is to account for the decline in the carrying value of the trading securities snail and lobsters combined carrying value was hundred fifty seven thousand two hundred dollars but at the end of 2011, the value the value of snail stock had gone up, but lobsters had declined. So this lowered. Uh, if you if you multiply these out, if you multiply these out, um, the total value has gone down by a thousand. And so that's how you get this entry right here. And then for the available for security or available for sale accounts. You have an unrealized increase, decrease in value. This entry reflects the overall decline in value of the available for sale securities account. The treasury notes increased in value, but the shark stock declined enough in value that it lowered the overall AFS account by 18400 So as you can see, um, if you add these, the, uh, the costs together, they were at 255200 At the end of the year, you had 
a total AFS value of 236,800, that's a difference of 18,400. And that's how you get this value right here. Now in 2002, we had these transactions happen. We sold all of our shares of Lobster Company for $16 a share, and we sold the Treasury notes at 102 plus the accrued interest. And so that's what these... Um, that's what this entry is right here. This is for selling the lobster shares. So you have 3,200 shares of lobster company at $16 a share. That's that cash amount of 51,200. But the cost of the shares were 67,200. That's a loss of 16,000. So you put the realized loss right here. It's a debit, uh, debit cash for the amount that you actually received, and the total investment in trading securities was lowered by 67,200. Now to account for selling those treasury notes, right here you've got cash, that's how much you received. The realized loss is 800 because the cost of the notes were 82,400, but they were sold at 102 of 80,000, which is 81,600. So that's a difference of $800. The investment in AFS securities goes down by the cost of the notes because they were sold at 103 of 80,000. And the interest revenue, um, that had accumulated was 80,000 times the 4% again, so that's 3,200. Now on December 31st, 2012, we have these adjusting entries again, and these were the values, Snail Company, $20 a share, Shark Company, $30 a share. So for this one, I move that down so you can see this. The market adjustment trading securities, the realized loss on trading securities of 16,000 lowered the value of the trading securities account from 105,000 to 89,000. And then when the value of the snail stock is at $20 per share at the end of 2012, that raises the trading securities account value to 100,000. That gives you an unrealized gain of 11,000. That's these these entries right here. For the market adjustment to the available for sale securities, this is a market adjustment that accounts for the $19,200 change in the value of the AFS securities account. And you add that to the AFS adjustment from $18,400 that happened in 2011, and that gives